Hi guys, I'm back. We're going to read the last few chapters and find out what happened to these eggs. Can't wait to find out. Chapter 7, Swan Surprise. What are you guys looking at? Brian asked. He and Lucy were standing behind Nate. Snake, Nate said, pointing. It's a giant man eating python. No, it isn't, Bradley said. It's just a big water snake. Very big, Brian said. Snakes are shy, Lucy said. I bet it's more afraid of us than we are of it. I couldn't be more afraid than I am, Nate insisted. It's so beautiful, Lucy said. Look how shiny its scales are. Pal lowered its nose to sniff the snake. The snake uncurled its long body and started to crawl away. What's the matter with its belly, Brian asked. It's got a big bump. I think it ate something, Bradley said. The kids watched as the snake disappeared into the tall weeds. What if it ate one of our eggs, Nate said. That bump in its belly looks like an egg. I saw a snake on TV that swallowed an egg whole, Lucy told the boys. How do they crack them open, Brian asked. I think their stomach muscles crack the eggs once they're inside, Lucy said. Oh, gross, Nate said. Guys, we don't know if that snake ate our egg, Bradley said. That lump in its belly could be a frog or something. We don't know if the raccoons did either, Brian said. So what do we do? Let's keep looking for eggshells, Lucy suggested. If we find them, at least we'll know something ate our eggs. If we bring the eggshells home, maybe we can still get the prize, Nate said. When the snake was gone, the kids kept walking. Pal was tugging on the leash. His nose was on the ground, sniffing everything. Suddenly, the two swans swam closer to the kids. They began hissing and flapping in the flapping the water with their wings. Guys, I don't think they want us here, Nate said. I wonder why, Brian said. I know why they're mad at us, Bradley said. Look, he bent down and parted the grass next to the water's edge. It's their nest. The nest was as big around as a tire. It was made of three layers. The bottom layer was twigs and small branches. On top of the branches was a thick layer of grass. The grass was lined with soft swan feathers. Oh my goodness, Lucy said, pointing at the nest. In the middle of the feathers lay four golden eggs. I think we found them. Chapter 8. Lucy's Brilliant Idea. We found them, Nate said. We get the treasure. Well, the swans really found them first, Bradley said. Guys, let's move away from the pond, Lucy said. The swans think we're going to steal, steal the eggs. The kids and Pal walked over to the, band, to the band shell and sat. Pal flopped on the ground with his head on his front paws. So what should we do, asked Brian. I want the prize. I feel sorry for the swans, Lucy said. Why, said Nate. Because I think someone stole their eggs, Lucy said. Maybe it was the raccoons or the snake, and now they don't have any eggs to hatch. That must be why they took ours. Yeah, the swans think the eggs will hatch, Bradley said. But they won't because they're hard-boiled. That's a bummer, Nate said. The swans will keep waiting and waiting, but nothing will happen. I have an idea, Bradley said. Let's get them another swan egg, one that will hatch. Where do we get one, Brian asked. Bra Bradley stood up and Pal jumped to his feet. There are swans at the petting zoo, Bradley said. Maybe they have eggs. Cool, Nate said, and we know someone who works there. Five minutes later, the kids and Pal walked through the petting zoo gate. They stopped to pet a baby goat, then they found the office then went inside. Well, hi, gang, said a smiling man with gray hair. He was sitting at a desk typing on a computer. It was Mr. Neater, who used to be the janitor at their school. The kids had helped him find a home for his pet rabbit at the petting zoo. Hi, Mr. Neater, Bradley said. How's Douglas? Ask him yourself, Mr. Neater said. He's here on my lap. And the kids walked closer. A large rabbit was sound asleep on Mr. Neater's knees. Pal whimpered and tried to lick Douglas. 
Bradley held the leash tighter. Can I pet him, Lucy asked. Mr. Nader smiled. Douglas will be sad if you don't, he said. Lucy patted the rabbit's soft head. Douglas twitched his ears and wiggled his tail. What brings you kids here, Mr. Nader asked. There's Douglas and Mr. Nader. From the book that we read about the bunny rabbit showing up in their classroom closet. Mr. Brad or Bradley told Mr. Nieder about the golden eggs in the swan's nest. My goodness, that is a problem, Mr. Nieder said. It's a sad thing, but a lot of wild birds lose their eggs to other animals who want to eat them. We were wondering if the petting zoo still had swans, Bradley said. Why, yes, we have a pair out in the barn, Mr. Nieder said. Then he grinned. Say, I'll bet I know what you're thinking. You want one of their eggs, right? Do they have any eggs, Mr. Nader? Asked, Nate asked. Mr. Nader nodded. You bet. I think they have a bunch this season. Wow, could we get one? Bradley asked. Let's go talk to Tom, our swan expert, Mr. Nader said. He put Douglas on the floor and stood up. Follow me, Mr. Nader led the kids and pal to a small barn. The first thing they saw was a mother hen and a batch of yellow baby chicks. Over this way, Mr. Nieder said. They followed him to the pen. Inside the, sw inside the pen, two swans were laying on some straw. One, an open door led to an outdoor area with a small pond. The mama is the one with her head down, and there is her clutch of eggs. Bradley gasped. Up close, the swans were really big. They were as white as snow with orange beaks and bright shiny eyes. Hi, Mr. Nieder, a voice said. A young man walked over to the pen. He was wearing a dark green sweatshirt with the petting zoo patch on one sleeve. Hi, Tom, Mr. Nieder said. He introduced the kids and pal. Then he told Tom about the swans in the park. My young friends are here. Our, my friends here are hoping your swans won't mind giving one of their eggs to giving giving one of their eggs, Mr. Nieder said. I'm sure they won't mind, Tom said. In fact, they have too many eggs. They usually lay three to eight, but this year we have 10. Tom entered the pen and spoke softly to the mother swan. Then he reached into her nest and pulled out two greenish colored eggs. These should hatch in about 10 days, Tom said, but we have to put them in the new nest pretty fast. But what if the snake or raccoon raccoon eat them before they hatch, Bradley asked. Tom put the eggs inside his sweatshirt pocket. That's always a problem, he said. He looked at Mr. Nieder. Any suggestions? The man shook his head. I have an idea, Lucy said. They all listened as she explained. You know what might, what just might work, Tom said. I'll meet you guys out front in five minutes. There they are, getting the eggs. Chapter 9. Happy Swans, Hungry Kids. While they waited, the kids played with the baby goats. He nibbled on their fingers and licked the palms of their hands. Okay, we're all set, Tom said a few minutes later. He came back with a tall man where, with a tall man wearing a green sweatshirt like his. This is Luke. He's a volunteer like Mr. Nieder. He's going to help us. Luke was carrying a plastic kitty pool. We use this for ducklings, he said. But all, it'll be perfect for your project. The three adults, four kids, and Pal had headed back to Central Center Park. Can you take us to the swan's nest, Tom asked. Sure, Bradley said. He and Pal led the way. Look, Lucy whispered as they approached the nest. One of the swans was laying on the nest, and the other swan in the pond nearby. The mother is on the nest, Luke whispered. Her mate keeps an eye on her to make sure she's safe. That poor mother swan is trying to hatch the eggs, Mr. Nieder said. Okay, to make this work, we need to get her off the nest, Luke said. He walked towards the nest, waving the kiddie pool. The mother swan hissed at him, but she hopped off her nest and backed away, never taking her eyes off the humans. She waded into the pond. She joined her mate and glared at the intruders. With the mother swan out of the nest, everyone could see the golden egg Easter eggs. Mr. Nieder removed the eggs and handed them to the four kids. Suddenly, the mother swan streaked over towards the kids, hissing and snapping her beak. Luke and Tom waved their arms, and she went back to the pond. 
but she did not look happy. It's okay, Mama Swan, Mr. Nader said. Pretty soon you'll have babies to keep you busy. Ready to get wet? Tom asked Luke and Mr. Nader. He kicked off his sneakers. How deep is the water? Mr. Nader asked. He was pulling off his shoes and socks. Not very, Luke said, removing his sneakers. I can, I helped to clean up some litter last year. I only got wet up to my knees. We can help Bradley. Can we help Bradley ask? Absolutely, Tom said. After this, after all, this was your idea. But first, this. Very gently, Tom took the two real swan eggs out of his sweatshirt pocket. He laid them in the center of the swan nest. Now, let's gather the nest, Tom said. All seven of us will lift it together and place it inside the kiddie pool. Careful not to let the nest break apart, Mr. Neander said. On a count of three, they picked up the nest and set it into the plastic pool. Great, Tom said. Now, Mr. Neander, Luke, and I will float it out to the, to the island. I think the water is too deep for you kids. The three adults waded into the water. They floated the kiddie pool with the swan's nest inside between them. The two swans hissed and flapped their wings. They followed the group to the island. Bradley, Brian, Lucy, and Nate watched them lift the nest out and set it on the island rocks. Then the, kid, the three adults came back with the kiddie pool. This should be interesting, Tom said. He sat on the shore. Let's watch and see what they do. Two swans swam up to the little island. They stretched their long necks and looked inside their nests. Then they began grunting. They've seen the eggs, Bradley said. It took just a few seconds for the mother swan to sit on the eggs. Her mate stayed near the nest. Oh, look. There they are, taking it across the island. It's a pretty big nest if it fits inside of a kitty pool. I think the problem has been solved, Mr. Neander said. He grinned at the kids. That was a great idea. So now the raccoons and snakes won't be able to get to their nests, right? Nate said. That's right, Tom said. Where's the net where the nest was before any creature could sneak up and steal the eggs while Mama Swan was off the nest? But now if a raccoon or a snake swims to the island, the swans would see it coming and fight it off. And trust me, Luke said, swans are excellent fighters. They all sat on the bank and watched the swans for a while. I can't wait to see the babies, Lucy said. Come back in about two weeks, Tom said. Baby swans are called cygnets. They're really cute. They're real cute. After a while, Bradley stood up. Well, we have our golden eggs, he said. Let's go home and get our treasure. The kids thanked Mr. Neater, Tom, and Luke. Then they headed across the park towards Bradley and Brian's house. Five minutes later, the four kids and Pal burst in the kitchen. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose were at the table playing Monopoly. We got them, Bradley announced. They each placed one golden egg on the table. Yeah, now we want our treasure, Nate said. I hope it's not Monopoly money. It's not money at all, Josh said. He walked over to the refrigerator. See, I told you it's food, Bradley said. Good, because I'm starving, Brian said. Josh opened the refrigerator and pulled out four tall chocolate Easter money. Awesome, Nate said. Right away, he broke off the chocolate ears and began chewing. So where did you guys find the golden eggs, Dink asked. It's a long story, Bradley said. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose just looked at him. So we're waiting, Ruth Rose said. We fought off a giant snake, Nate said, and a pack of hungry raccoons, Brian added. Then we had to swim in the pond, Lucy put in. The three older kids stared. Is that all true, Josh asked. Brian licked his chocolate bunny. Of course it's true, he said. We would, would we tell a lie the day before Easter? There they all are. Eating their chocolate bunnies. There's the three older kids in shock at what they just told them. And what did you guys think of that book? That was a pretty crazy Easter egg hunt, wasn't it? It might be fun for you guys to do your own Easter egg at home. Easter egg hunt at home. Maybe you could hide the eggs for a younger sibling. Maybe a Older sibling could hide them for you, or maybe you could even ask mom or dad to hide them for you guys. That would be pretty fun. 
Well, I'm glad you guys listened to the book with me. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a happy Easter. Bye, guys.